Hi, my name is Tejpreet Kaur and I am the uh, Managing Director of Strong Start Limited, which is a company that supports families with young children um, in those really early years of child development. Yes, what we do is, the way that we support families is we offer um, trainings for caregivers, so nanny trainings, parent trainings, and also programming such as playgroups or other classes such as nutrition classes, first aid and CPR. So the way that we structure our nanny trainings is by um, grouping them based on a child's age. So we have a zero to six month infant care uh, training, which uh, covers all of the ways in which um, you care for an infant from hygiene, from child safety, from um, supporting a child's development, such as physical development, cognitive development. Um, we do a, we focus a lot on household management and communication, like how do you create a schedule for a child, how do you manage your duties as a nanny, and some are housekeepers as well, so how do you manage your duties and um, do it in a structured, effective way. Um, we also have um, a developing babies training, which is focused on six months to 12 months, and then we go on to uh, our more advanced courses for one to two years, and then two to three years. Um, and then we have overall general training, such as like professionalism, communication, um, a general caregiving and um, child development trainings. Yes, um, so that's a really good question. Um, you know, a lot of families come to us wanting to have trained nannies, uh, uh, and often is the case is that there aren't nannies with any professional training or background. Um, you know, the first things first is that you want somebody who you have a good rapport with, you can build a rapport with. Sometimes there's a nanny that comes highly recommended to some families, but um, they, they're not a good fit for everybody. So it, it really depends on if you can build a good rapport whether um, you have recommendations, always look out for employer recommendations. Follow up with those um, recommendations. Don't just um, accept a letter of recommendations as a, as at the at, at its face value. What you want to be able to do is make it sure you f call the employers, ask the employers specific questions that are really important to you and your family. Uh, some questions can be, um, and, and you ask, and and the questions that you ask that you want to ask are are questions that will be helpful to support your household. For example, um, you want to ask like, you know, what are the duties that this nanny did? Uh, what were her main duties? Um, you know, uh, did she, if you need somebody to do pick up and drop off from school, ask about that. Has she done that before? Um, what were her working hours? What was her demeanor like? How does she engage with your child? Uh, um, you know, you want to know, were there any issues of misconduct that happened in your home that may raise a flag? Um, were there any que like questionable acts that may have happened uh, while she was working for you. Um, overall, generally, would you hire her again? What, what was the reason that she's not working for you anymore? So specific questions like that are really important. You know, the more clear that you can be with your um, the role and your expectation with your nanny, the the better it is. Because what what will happen is that your nanny um, will know what what you require of her in her role. And so, and then also, if you have multiple staff, such as a housekeeper and a nanny, or a cook and a nanny, then there's no um, room for arguments over no, this is your task, no, it's my task, etc. So that so it, everybody knows what their roles are. Um, what, what the expected duties that they have um, to um, complete, and um, and then how much, and then how much you're going to be paying them for for those duties. Another thing to add in this JD or TR is what, what does overtime look like in, um, with this nanny? Um, you know, if, if what, what are the hours that you're asking her to cover so that she can also prepare and plan her day as well. She may have young children that she needs to pick up from school. And, um, you know, so the all, working out all those things are really important and having it in a written contract is a very important so that um, the employer is clear on, on what the nanny is expected to complete and the nanny knows what what tasks are under um, what she should be completing as well. Um, you know, so that is something that is individual to the household. Uh, we often have parents asking us like, okay, should I be getting a health check? We feel that, um, you know, People being aware of their health is really important, it, particularly women being, um, you know, confident in their own health is really important. Um, and so, I, you know, it, 
so the health background checks is really a good way to encourage your nanny to just know what's going on inside of her body. Um, what we've found is that employers that do encourage their nanny to and pay for their nanny's um, you know health checks, um, often the nanny is really appreciative of that request and that support. So and the things that have come out, um, you know, in our experience are things like you know um, undetected diabetes or high blood pressure that she wasn't aware of, and and this is all for us. You know, we feel that if you frame it in a way of women's health, like women knowing what's going on inside of their bodies, taking ownership and responsibility for taking care of their bodies, the more it's going to benefit your nanny and then ultimately your child. Because you know, you don't want it to ever be an incident where you know, your if your nanny had high blood pressure and was unaware of it, and then became um, you know, it resulted in something happening to your nanny and her not being able to take care of your child. So it's yes, we support health. Um, background checks, yeah. Yeah, you know, so pay is dependent on, one, one thing is that each household has their own budgets and salaries. Um, and pay is, in Nairobi, pays for salaries, like, um, sorry, salaries for um, caregiving or being a nanny really have, it has a huge range. Um, you know, when we have people calling us to see if we have trained nannies, um, you know, we, we certainly ask, like, what is your budget? Because there's certain nannies that have a requirement, a pay requirement that they want, need to meet so that she can cover her own expenses etc as well and um, so there's a huge range anything goes from um, you know folks in Nairobi pay anywhere between like 11k which is minimum wage all the way to 30k um, you know which is uh, you know that that's the range so that's a huge range um, and of course each household has to look for what um, you know they um, can budget out and p afford and at the same time you you do need to understand that um, based on what you're offering um, will come the experience of a nanny as well so the, there's nannies that um, you know have gone through trainings have worked with a lot of different families can come in and say you know they know how to cook they know how to clean they know how to keep a schedule, etc. And those will be, you know, more of a top tier nanny that will be expecting a little bit higher salary. And then there may be somebody that is fresh and new, maybe an excellent caregiver still, um, but it can actually take, um, you know, well accept a lower salary as well, as long as you're willing to train them as well. Yeah.